Hey everyone, welcome back to Intro to DJing. And in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to set static beat grids here in Virtual DJ. This static beat grids are gonna work well for tracks where, for instance, you have pop, hip hop, or EDM that's recorded with a click track or produced with a computer where the BPM is constant. This is generally fine for probably most of the music you're gonna be playing. So knowing how to set static beat grids is really important, but if you are using tracks that have, let's say a live drummer or there are tempo changes throughout, such as a DJ transition track, which we'll talk about later, then you'll also need to understand how to set elastic or dynamic beat grids. But in this video, we'll just be talking about most of the music you encounter, which will likely just have it the same tempo throughout. It'll be locked. And it's good to know how to do this, that way sync works, that way your phase meters work, otherwise you can get confused very easily about what the actual tempo is. So preparing your music, setting the beat grid accurately is important if you actually wanna be using any of these tools or sorting your music by BPM and making sure your downbeats are set correctly. So most of the time when you actually analyze tracks, it will do it right, probably 95% of the time, but sometimes it doesn't get the tempo right and sometimes it doesn't get the phase right. So in this track, I can even look here at the grid and I can see that it is done incorrectly. So what we need to do is edit the BPM. A few ways to do this in Pro View, if you click on the tempo, you can click on the edit BPM button here. You can also right click on the track and click on BPM editor or if you right click on the waveform, you can click on the BPM button here and it will open the BPM editor. These are different ways to get to the BPM editor. And there are a couple ways to set your beat grid. The first thing you wanna do is set your downbeat, which actually has been done here for us, but if anything, it's this kind of gray line. You wanna just set this right to the beginning. So if you use your mouse wheel to scroll in, you wanna just set this right down to your start time. That works really well. The next thing you wanna do is set in this number. You can do this often by dragging this once you've set your downbeat to meet the next downbeat. Or if you play it and use the metronome, you can actually tap out the BPM and it'll generally get close. So that tends to be one way you can do it. If I play the track, It generally gets in the ballpark, but I can also just type it in at 138. I know what the BPM of this track is, but of course we need to make sure we set the downbeat correctly as well. But once you have the right tempo and the downbeat set, it'll generally be right on the way you would want it to. If you make any changes and you wanna revert back, just click on this button and click on reanalyze, and it will reanalyze the beat grid and generally do a pretty good job, though it may be slightly off, so at that point it helps to just type in the correct number. And once you've done that, sure enough, the rest of the track should be gridded correctly. Now this green line is where the playhead is, and then this line, this red line would be where your beat grid is. And once you're happy with the result, you can also turn on the metronome. to make sure it's locked. And then what I'll typically do is get towards the end of the track and just make sure that the tempo is still locked towards the end, because it may be hard to hear small variations in tempo early on, but over time, they basically, what'll happen is if your beat grid isn't set correctly, it'll end up diverging quite a bit by the end of your track. So that's correct, I'm now happy with this, so I'm just gonna close out of this, and your beat grid will be set. So this is how you set those static beat grids. In the next video, we'll look at how to set dynamic or elastic beat grids. Thanks for watching.